his thing. So we're going to read Genesis um, 48. And we're going to read 1 through 7. But I'm going to first stop with 1 because it says, Now it came about after these things, or it came to pass after these, these things. And we know that that means we've got to look back and we've got to see what things. Because it's, all, it's connecting the two thoughts together. So <clears throat> for the ones that haven't been here, Joseph's family has come to Egypt. Now these are the ones that sold him into slavery. They've abused him. They tossed him in the pit. They could care less whether he died or he lived. But by the hand of God, he got brought to Egypt where he was made a slave. And then after being a slave, he rose to the top of being a slave. And then Potiphar's wife, who was his boss's wife, she made sexual advances and she lied and said that he had taken advantage of her. And he didn't, but he got thrown in prison to save... Um, his wife's face, so to speak. And so he got thrown in prison for 13 years. Now, what did we talk about on Saturday night? We talked about a time period where the green horses have to wait. They have to sow their life. They have to sow their, their riches, their, their earthly riches and, and life so that they can have what? What did Joseph do when he came out of prison? He was the man, wasn't he? He was the prime minister to the Pharaoh. Do you understand that? Now I understand, now that I'm studying about the green horses and all that, it's all in the Bible. Now I'm understanding what had to happen. In order for Joseph to be prime minister, who was a Jew, the spiritual atmosphere had to change. Do you remember what caused the famine? The east wind. Do you remember what I taught you about coming from the east? Every time something comes from the east, it's from the enemy. So the famine was from the devil. And God said, oh, okay, well, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I got somebody who's willing to let me use their life in affliction, in suffering, to defeat the spiritual atmosphere. How awesome. I want you to see that. Joseph had to pay the price. We aren't just given stuff. We aren't just going to be the rulers. That's why we don't have Christians in the White House, right? Real Christians in the White House. That's why we don't have Christian leadership, because no one's willing to pay the price to defeat the spiritual atmosphere. The price is you got to sow your earthly life so that you can have eternal life. And that's what I've been studying. We've been taught as Christians that we got to get to heaven, get to the rapture, whatever. We talk about this. But actually, you know what the finish line is? Eternal life. Now, we've been taught as Christians eternal life is getting to be with Jesus in heaven and all that. That's not what eternal life is. I'm learning that there are seven spirits of God. And there are seven evil manifestations that defile those seven spirits. I'm studying it through the seven churches again. I mean, God is just going, vroom, vroom, vroom. it's just all there. I never saw it before. I've studied Ephesus. And Ephesus uh, has a strong apostolic anointing. So the apostolic anointing, um, oh, I forgot what, what, it, what it was. I studied Smyrna today, so I'll, I'll tell you what Smyrna is. Smyrna is self-sacrifice. That's one of God's attributes. So in or order to get sinful man back to being one with God, we have to have self-sacrifice. We have to have all seven attributes back to be with God. Because we have fallen. We are sinful men. And so it's not just enough to get into heaven by the skin of your... I've studied Smyrna today, so I'll, I'll tell you what Smyrna is. Smyrna is self-sacrifice. That's one of God's attributes. So in or order to get sinful man back to being one with God... 
we have to have self-sacrifice. We have to have all seven attributes back to be with God. Because we have fallen. We are sinful men. And so it's not just enough to get into heaven by the skin of your teeth or whatever. If you want to have eternal life, that means immortality with God. That means you are a part of the totality of God like we talked about. No wonder God's been teaching. Do you see how his footsteps have been? I'm amazed. Because, <laughs> guys, I don't know this stuff. I literally go to my Bible, say, okay, Father, show me. And he's got it all planned out, how he wants to teach us. I stand amazed. I'm not seminary trained. I'm just somebody who loves him. And he's been teaching us about the totality of God and how that is the finish line. If you fall short, remember the bowl, if you fall short of going up to four and then up to five, if you don't make it to five and you fall back, you don't get oneness with God. Now, Ashley asked a really good question today, and I don't know the answer. I'm going to have to study it. But if you don't have immortality with God, if you're not brought back into oneness with God, will you die? That's a good question. I got to study that. I don't have the answer to that. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're not brought back into oneness with God and you're not immortal, possibly you could. So the goal, Paul was talking about getting to the finish line. That finish line is not just being in heaven with Christ. It is being in the totality of God. It's being immortal. It's ruling and reigning with him and coming back into oneness with him. How about that? And that's what the seven churches are about. And that's what the seven, that's what the ites are about because they're in the, what, promised land? trying to keep us out. So I was telling them, let me, let me, I want to say this to you. Remember we talked about, well, you weren't here on Saturday night, but we talked about sowing our eternal, I mean, our, our earthly life for eternal life. You cannot have eternal life if you don't sow your earthly life. Cannot have it. And eternal life is being one with God. And this wind is what was causing the famine. So God knew that the devil, it's like a chess match, you know. Not that the devil is any match for God. But the only reason why he is a match for God right now is because we are defiled. And we need to get back. If we weren't defiled, God would be like, he'd destroy him. But we're tangled up in this mess. So therefore, he is caught up in it with us. You see that? Do you see how we limit him? So the chess match is on. There's an east wind that's coming to cause a famine and destroy everybody. Did you see how everybody in the world was going to be destroyed by this famine? So there was an east wind that the devil was bringing, and God had to have a sacrifice. He needed somebody that would go through the suffering and the affliction so that he could defeat the spiritual atmosphere so that he could be prime minister, so that he could spare all of Israel. Now I understand what, why Joseph was put in prison for 13 years. I'm like, God, come on. This guy, he, he did everything you asked him to do, and you threw him in prison. For, I just don't get Now I understand. We are in prison right now. We talked about it on Saturday night. We are in prison. We are in Sheol, just like Jesus went down to Sheol and took all the people out of paradise, that's where we are right now. Because we've been, uh, the church has not accepted our message. They haven't accepted our questions. This doesn't seem right. Oh, well, you know, you can't question the pastor. He's got that covering and all that. You can't question that. you got to come to him. Or you obviously are getting off on the wrong path if you're starting to question your pastor. That's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that I'm supposed to be led by the Spirit of God not by man, and not by man's structures. So if you want to rule and reign, you're going to have to pay a price, and that price is suffering. That price is affliction. But in that, you defeat the spiritual atmosphere. If you're going to rule and reign, you've got to sow this earthly life. Your life can't be about you. 